the best thing that I'll ever know. Good morning, everybody. We are in a very, very beautiful bay um, called America Bay. And it is just around the corner from Pittwater, which is a very popular, in fact, this entire area is a very, very popular cruising ground um, on the New South Wales coast in Australia. And we spent the night here and it is just so, so beautiful. There is very, very peaceful. There's hardly anyone here. There's about a quadrillion mooring boys. I've never seen so many empty mooring boys in one place before. <laughs> and they're free, which is like even more shocking. I think after coming from the Caribbean where you had to pay $30 a night for a boy and you were lucky to get one in the first place. Um, yeah, it's a very, very kind of different um, vibe here. Today we are going to um, head around to a place called The Basin, which um, is in Pittwater Bay and it's a very popular little anchorage again mooring boys hopefully we can get one we have a fried breakfast on the way don't we passively aggressively putting their breakfast order in <laughs> I was someone's having sausage two bacons two eggs and a couple of slices of toast <laughs> i was told there'd be bacon <laughs> so yeah but we thought we'd, we'd go around there first because it's only about an hour away and we can have a lovely cup of tea mm. en route so i think maybe shall we just get going <laughs> shall, we just... <laughs> shall, we, shall we just go then <laughs> All right then. Just drop the stop, drop the stop. Bring that window down. Like how is this so easy? Even when we rose it was like <laughs> Look at these jellyfish, look at that big marker. Wow, yeah there's loads of jellyfish here. We put the drone up last night, didn't we? And we um, saw in the drone footage that there's like jelly, we're surrounded Look by at jelly. The size of it. Stop swearing. Well, I can't help it. You can. That is fairly ginormous. Wow. Right, well, get the strap off. I mean, the thing is, babe, that it's so easy to sail this thing that it's actually very straightforward just to like put the sails up. So this is easy as well, isn't it? Yeah compared to Ruby Rose. I'm used to asking Nick to do, undo the sail bag and to do it up because on Ruby Rose, I couldn't actually physically do it myself. I was just too short and I didn't have like the arm reach. What? Oh, my phone's still up there. Oh yeah. We put my phone up the mast <laughs> to get some phone signal because this bay is like, there's no signal here, which is actually quite lovely. But we did have to, you know, we do work. On the internet so we did need some internet this morning so we put the phone up the mast in a um in a camera bag <laughs> might want to get that down issue that we have there's literally we can't communicate there's you can't you can't hear each other you can't there's zero you zero and i think that um if we open the windows yes yeah. that will be helpful all i would say is just for future reference yeah because you were dropping the boy on on starboard, starboard yeah. right? i only ran the port engine oh did you good because i was about to yell at you to, to turn off the starboard engine you know i just ran one engine So, um, a couple of points, I think. Um, something we were talking about yesterday, like your father, Stephen, big shout out to Stevie. Mm -hmm. He's a surfer um, and probably one of the most, uh, 
dedicated, obsessed surfers I've ever come across. Although I do realize that surfers are- They're so, all like that. <laughs> yeah, they, they are all like obsessed with surfing. But your dad has always said to me in the 12 years we've been together, oh Nick, I just need to go for a surf. And he's kind of strung out and um, you know, life is getting on top of him. He just wants to go surfing. Even if he doesn't get to surf, he just goes for a paddle. And I, what I was saying to you yesterday is that we got off the boat uh, mid-September and it's now March. And I've just felt just slightly on edge, not being on the boat or not being on a boat. And I guess something that you and I both talked about is that neither of us have been sleeping well. Yesterday we did our first ocean passage. And when I say ocean, we didn't cross an ocean. We went, actually went you know, and sailed on an ocean. Not, a, not an enclosed waterway. And I just felt so, like, complete is a bit schmaltzy, but just like, yeah, this is what I needed. Just, I literally, I felt like, yeah, this is what is missing in my life. Like, this is what I, 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 I need. And I actually think that sailing now, because it's such, I don't know, it's not just the, the getting from A to B, it's the lifestyle, but also being on a boat and kind of understanding that that's a choice that we made and we want to continue that choice. So yeah, so firstly, being back on a boat um, just makes me feel far more centered. Um, and the second thing is, I've been sleeping so well. Like I get to bed and I wake up and it's morning. <laughs> and that, that just doesn't happen. Mm. So I feel very settled. Um, I just, yeah, I just love what we do. I do, I, I have a genuine, genuine passion for it. Come here, come here, grumpy bollocks. This, this is the face that sunk a thousand ships. Eh? Grumpy ass. All right, well. Now, tell me why, uh, this, is, this is what you can explain to our, our, our viewership. Mm. What happened? I feel like that was recording that whole time. So I didn't happened? realize it was. Uh, so. Um, relive it. Relive it. <laughs> relive it, I'm just, I'm just on the jibe, so I'm not deferring my duties. Mm. I was planning to put the jib out. That's a one man job on this boat, which is lovely. And I decided to film myself because sometimes I have to film myself doing stuff. And I put the camera on the side deck thinking, oh yes, we're nice and steady. No harm could possibly come of this. And um, it turned out that the microphone was not properly attached to the camera. I don't know, I just, I caught the microphone on the guardrail, on the lower guardrail, and it just plopped into the sea. Now, you can explain to why you're pissed off with me for this. Because you're sitting there on WhatsApp. Why would you ask me that question? As our microphone carries an absolutely huge muff, it simply bobbed around and didn't sink. This gave us the opportunity for a quick MOB drill. We picked the mic up and off we went again. Happy days. Well, this is very, very pleasant. And at least we got a chance to uh, <laughs> to man over board drill, <laughs> which was quite, I guess, helpful. Jesus. If that microphone restarts, it will be an absolute miracle. And I'm interested to know how, why don't you comment down below actually, let me know if you can tell the difference in audio between that microphone, which was quite an expensive Rode microphone. Can't remember how much it costs, but a couple of hundred dollars at least. And this microphone, which is a, I think $30 uh, Comica. Yeah, Comica microphone this, this is what we put this is the microphone we used for like our very very early episodes it's when we bought our first little compact sony camera and we popped this cheap microphone on so yeah let me know if you can hear the audio difference because if you can't then um might as well save some money but anyway this is very 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 pleasant Just 
poked my head out this side and uh, realised how windy it was. I didn't realise. What's the time? The time is uh, 10.30. Yeah, you want to get some more trees. Oh no, the, um, the wind is picking up today. Oh, okay. It's going to be quite a strong southerly today. Hence us going to an Anchorage potato for the south. Lots of boats in there, but hopefully there'll be some free boys as well. Is that a halyard? Do you want to just type that halyard? So there's a lot over there. Yeah, I reckon I'm just going to go for one of those. Go for the first one. First one. Yeah. Just pick it up. Just pick it up. We'll think about it after. The one behind the monohull? Yeah, the one behind the monohull. Oh, we'll see how we get on with this mooring. It's a uh, yacht club only, but normally they're a little bit kind to strangers like us. Could be that we're uh, moving later on. Either way, this is a pretty nice place to be for now. We'll uh, get the boat tidied up and get on with it. So uh, we'll see you all later. A helicopter just dropped a rainwater tank into someone's garden. I shudder to think how much that would have cost. That's how we do things in Australia. <laughs> No roads, get a helicopter. Nick and I have just been debating whether or not we're allowed to use this boy or not and what our plan will be if we get kicked off. There's loads of space around to anchor. There's space, loads of space, just in the next little little bay along. If push comes to shove, then we can do that. But there's loads and loads of boys free. So if someone from the club comes along and says, you're not allowed to be on that boy, then um, that's okay, we'll move. But in the meantime, Lunch. lunch. It's kind of, it was meant to be brunch and now it's turned into lunch. Bacon, eggs, toasted bread, avocado. A avocado. You wouldn't be an Australian brunch without avocado. What? 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 What the hell? Did huh? you just, why would you lick a battery? See if it's still alive. Well, it doesn't look live to me. I can see that just by looking at it. Well, it's just, it's just rust. Do you want to see if it's live? No. Why, what, are you trying to give yourself an electric shock? That's what you do, you lick the terminals. Is there no other way of seeing whether it's live? Yeah, you can use a multimeter or you can just stick your tongue on it. You know, a nine volt battery, it's not gonna give me like, restart my heart, is it? Look. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> look I'm not in the mood I put for 12 years of your <laughs> <laughs> 12 long hard years of your <laughs> And this is, the, this is the final straw. Is that what you were about to say, my love? I never. So I'm very satisfying about barbecue breakfast. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say apart from the fact that I screwed up one of the eggs. No, the eggs are lovely. No, I brushed one of the eggs. No, it doesn't um, It does cook it really well. Mm. Yeah, we're getting any with this. We'll just move 100, 100 mm -hmm. metres out and anchor in deeper water. It's not even deeper over there. This is all pretty shallow. There's a lot of people who are actually really scared to anchor. Well, I used to be. Really scared to anchor. Uh huh. Mm. Probably until we set off, I was far more at ease um, on a boy than an anchor. Yeah, I remember when our first season cruising on Ruby Rose. I mean, we did anchor, but we were pretty nervous about it. It wasn't until we got to the Caribbean and we were anchoring all the time mm -hmm. that we kind of um, gained some confidence in our anchor. I think for me, the changing point was one, getting that new anchor, mm. and two, you know, using it in that storm in Marsh Harbour, using our kind of like anchoring technique. You have to have a good anchor. Yeah. So if you don't have a good anchor, essentially you don't get a good night's sleep. Yeah. the dinghy. Assuming there's somewhere for dinghies to land. Just come into the beach babe. So. 
I can't read it. I'll have to go up to it and read it. No mooring to vegetation. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, lovely clean water. Oh, that's nice. I just discovered that our dinghy doesn't have an anchor. I'm trying to come up with a solution. This looks absolutely delightful, and I think the tide is going out, so I don't think the dinghy is going to float away in a hurry. Oh my god. It's just like wallabies just hanging out over there, just chilling. There's one hopping around right there. It must be very useful. People. This is called the basin. And this is a um, lovely little lagoon behind me. You can't get in here by dinghy because it's um, kind of fenced off. Just lovely. And then on the other side, there is a campground. So you can come down here, pitch a tent and uh, camp with the wallabies and the goannas. And um, I'm amazed actually at how used to, I mean, you know, the wallabies just are not phase at all by the presence of all these people like there's kids like not quite running up to them but definitely kind of running around them and they just don't seem phased at all so I guess the wallabies are very used to people around hey Nick yeah well how much I don't know what wallabies eat from what I've read about Australia they eat a lot of peanut butter what that's just the adverts I think <laughs> seem too fast by us do they no um, you know i've said this before about you australians you just take all this stuff for granted like honestly and like we're six foot from like wallabies just grazing in a park like i don't yeah, know isn't it? it is nuts but i just don't think you get it i get it i think that i'm, I'm excited it excites me too You are, you're very, very... <laughs> David Attenborough. A lovely evening. It's like loads of people fishing off the back of their boats. It's a very peaceful bay. There's a lot of people around, a lot of boats, but it kind of just adds to the uh, the vibe. I had a good day today, apart from the microphone going overboard. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I really hope that you are enjoying this series of us sailing in Australia. Uh, comment down below, particularly if you're not from Australia, and let us know what you think, whether you're enjoying yourself as well. It's very, very special for me personally to be sailing at last after all these years in my home country. So thank you for watching this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please subscribe. You just got to click that button down there and also hit the notification bell so that you don't miss an episode. Give us a thumbs up, comment, let us know what you think, and we will see you next week with a brand new episode. Bye. <laughs> Take 10. Cheers. Cheers. No, we're going to do it properly. What? <laughs> okay, ready? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
I think we can't, we just can't say cheers. We just have to clink. All right, clink. <laughs> Testing, 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 drop the microphone into the sea, and we did a man overboard. So that's because of our, um, listen, Eleanor had to see that, you apologise to her right now. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, this was South Australia, my <laughs> sort of shot up under my chin so fast I looked like a Christmas <laughs> turkey. I don't think I'll be able to hear that because of the wind noise anyway.